Welcome, Slacker Cubed here. Today we're going to get a little more technical. We're going to take a look at how some automatic droppers and dispensers work. This should be a good reference for future tutorials and should give you a good idea of how that part of different contraptions work. So yeah, let's uh, take a look. First off, the difference between a dropper and a dispenser. Uh, basically, dispensers with the round opening shoot out items. So if you want to shoot arrows or hatch eggs, you'd use the dispenser. Where the dropper with the mouth looking opening uh, drops items into, say, like a water stream to transport them. Uh, drops them into lava if you want to get rid of them. Which I've got a tutorial on an automatic trash compactor with a safety button uh, coming out soon. And you'll see a link to that in the upper right hand corner. Uh, but something worth looking at. But yeah, let's uh, take a look at how these work. This is probably the design I see most often, uh, which is a comparator taking a signal, and this could be a dropper or a dispenser, and sending it into a repeater, which adds a one tick delay and boosts the signal. And then that comes around on two different redstone lines, one of them going to a repeater here, and that's just to keep these from connecting like they are on this side. Uh, but yeah, this powers this block, which powers the dropper, which shoots out the item. Uh, but we need that to turn on and off, otherwise it's only going to shoot out one item. And that's where this side here uh, powers this comparator. So it turns it off for a second, and then it'll turn back on. So it kind of gives you this one tick delay, this pulse or, t or clock. Uh, in order to turn this thing on and off and spit those items out one at a time. So yeah, let's uh, take a look at how this thing works. So yeah, it's dropping all the items on the ground and we'll see that uh, clock or pulse there, uh, turning it on and off. Gotta make sure I pick up all my flowers. I had to go pick those myself. All right, yeah, so let's take a look uh, a little more in depth uh, if we put a piece of redstone there, let's say, and throw 32 items in the dropper, we'll see that that powers only one piece of redstone. So that wouldn't be enough to do anything. So that's part of the reason why we put that repeater where we do. And then that repeater also adds a one tick delay, which creates this clock. Uh, but that's powering this piece of redstone at 15, like all repeaters do, and then it goes down to 14, 13, and 12. So the 12 hitting the side of this comparator turns it off as long as it's more powerful than the signal coming out of this. So we need the dropper to give off a signal of less than 12. And in order to do that, we have to make sure we don't fill up more than 7 slots. So we can't have more than seven stacks of items in there before it will uh, not turn off and stop the clock so items will stop getting spit out. But if you want to put more than seven stacks of items in here, you would just use a hopper and say a chest, and you could power those so the items stay in there until you need them to come out the dropper. So just as an example here, if we put items into the hopper, we'll see that they get dropped as quick as they go into the dropper. So this isn't really gonna create any delay. Uh, this thing's basically the exact same speed as the hopper. Just another note there. And if you wanna get more into how the signal strength works coming off these uh, droppers and dispensers, there's plenty of info on the wiki about that. I just know for this setup, it's gonna need to be seven or less stacks, but like I said, most of the time you use a chest and a hopper, and you'd, you'd stop them in there anyways, and you'll see that in some future tutorials. And then the next design, I just thought this was worth looking at. Personally, I wouldn't use this. I don't, don't think it's as useful, and there's some things that can go wrong, but it's worth taking a look at just because I have seen it from time to time. So with this here, you'll see there is no clock. There's no redstone going into the side of this comparator to turn it on and off. So it just creates a steady power. So if we put the items directly into the dropper, you're just going to get one spit out and then it's just going to be powered. But the way people use these is if you feed them with a hopper, they do get spit out one by one because one by one they're hitting that dropper and creating this pulse. But this thing runs at two-thirds the speed of that one, and I'm always afraid if there's some sort of loading issue and you wind up with two items in the dropper, 
that it's going to stop working on you. And of course you want stuff that's reliable that you don't have to worry about. Now if you did want to save on that one repeater, you can make this thing the same way just by doing that. And then if for some reason you want to slow this down, you can also add some delay there. Although at a certain point, you could just wind up getting it stuck. <laughs> but you do have some options to add some delay if for some reason you needed that. Um, generally the speed of a hopper is about as slow as you want to do anything in this game, but you never know. All right, and then my other go-to design and the one you probably see quite often is this one here. Uh, this basically works the same way. We've got the comparator pulling a signal into this block, the repeater adding a tick delay and boosting the signal into the side of the comparator. So it's got the same pulse as the other one. It just powers this piece of redstone on top of the block, which powers this block. Now this is bud powered or requires a block update to power diagonally to the dropper. But this comparator turning on and off creates that block update which causes this to work pretty much the same way as this one. But with this, you don't need to power any blocks along this line, so it could potentially fit into places where this one doesn't. But yeah, let's take a look. So you see that works pretty much the same. It's just using bud power or a block update in order for that to work. And we can get a little more into uh, uh, the bud power here by taking a look at this contraption. And this is just basically the same clock powering the same piece of redstone, but it doesn't have that comparator to create the block update. So if we've put flowers in this side, we'll see that that is turning on and off, but nothing's coming out of here. But if we create a block update, a well-timed block update, <laughs> we'll see a couple items getting spit out there. <laughs> well, got three of them, all right. Uh, but yeah, that's where with the clock running into the comparator, it turns on and off and gives it that block update so it runs the same speed. Where with me trying to throw blocks in there, it's a little iffy because you got to time that right. Uh, but yeah, that's how we can show that that is uh, bud powered there. And there's also a variation on this that can fit into some places where this one doesn't. That's basically the same idea. Whoop. Uh, just a little bit, uh, a little bit different there. So let's take a look. And yeah, that should be right. So in this case, it's powering the block, which is powering this piece of redstone, which is powering this block, which is powering the repeater, which is doing the same clock as before. But this one's one narrower, so this could potentially fit where the other one doesn't. So just so you know that that exists. But yeah, like I said, these are probably the two I use most often, but another one definitely worth mentioning is the Observer one. This uses Observers to run about twice the speed of these other two uh, to spit out items. And with this one, it's that same comparator powering a sticky piston, which lifts this Observer. And when two Observers are facing each other, you get a really fast signal, and if they stay facing each other, you get this quick pulse or clock. And then we'll take a look at this, but like I said with these things, they run the same speed as a hopper. So if you're only feeding this with one hopper, it's basically going to run the same speed as these two, except it's going to be a lot louder because of that piston. But if you feed it with two hoppers or preload the dispenser or dropper, then you're going to get that extra speed out of it. So yeah, let's take a look. Oh, I've got it turned off. <laughs> I had a little on-off switch for it. <laughs> All right, that's not helping. <laughs> Let me get my arrows back here. All right, one more time. So if we put arrows into just one of them, you'll see us not really going any faster. But if we feed it with two, we get an obvious speed increase. And you'll see that signal going back nice and quick. So yeah, definitely a useful thing if you're wanting to shoot some arrows. Yeah, when it runs out and goes back to just one hopper. 
And then also super fun to <laughs> pick up all the arrows. Super satisfying. And then I just add a little on-off switch to this because it can basically be its own little contraption that you can turn on and off. Because this is powering this by 15, which is turning this comparator off. Yeah, just kind of a little mini arrow shooter, but this is also useful for other things. But again, it has its limitations because you have to feed it with two hoppers or preload the dispenser. But yeah, I think these are the uh, the major versions you would see, and hopefully I explained that well. Certainly if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave me a comment, and hopefully uh, you learn something. This will be useful in the future. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, or at least got a kick out of it, don't forget to leave a like. And if you have any suggestions for improvements, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments section below. We'll see you in the next one. Later.